Hi, this is Rachel from TLC Inspirations, and today we're going to be making a felted egg pin cushion. And this is going to require us felting an egg first, and we're going to do needle felting to do that. And then we're going to embroider into the egg, and I'll show you how to hide your knots on that. Um, but here's the tools we'll need. We need wool yarn, wool roving, scissors, um, embroidery floss, a needle, and this is an embroidery needle, but this is a multi-needle tool for needle felting and things go a little bit faster if you have a multi-tool but you can use a single needle if that's all you have it will just take longer um, okay so step one is felting the eggs so let's start on that okay for the foundation of our felting we are going to use yarn because it's a little bit faster than doing the wool roving from scratch and it's just a little bit easier. We want to keep it somewhat egg shaped and that's not going to be apparent in these first rolls but as we get a little bit bigger we'll have one side be a little thicker than the other and you want your um, foundation to be a little bit larger than what you want your pin cushion to be because the needle felting will mat it down a little bit Okay, you can see how I've, I've wound in different directions, and it's about the size that I want. And so all I'm going to do is cut off I'm just going to take this little end piece and I'm just going to run it through so it doesn't come undone. Okay, so this is our little egg, a little egg shape, and it's pretty rough, but it's not a big deal. We are going to, I'm going to show you how to wrap this in wool roving um, with some leftover pink that I have. And when you wrap it, try to do it in long strips. Um, makes it a little bit easier to cover and keep it like attached. But if you have little pieces, I've done that as well, and although it doesn't stay on as well, once you start tacking it in with the needle, it works pretty well. So you want to try and go in different directions and try to get as good a coverage as you can with your pieces. Once you think you've got your uh, roving covering the rest of your wool yarn, then go ahead and grab your multi-tool, this little bad boy and we are going to start felting and I'll show you as I go I'll show you the different stages um, of the needle felting so you can kind of get a clue when to stop <laughs> in the first part all you want to do is kind of get all of your roving attached so you're kind of we're just doing a quick once over here to make sure that our roving holds in place and that we want it, that it and that it stays where we put it. So your pieces like where your underneath wool is showing you want to kind of pull that over and make sure it's a little bit secured while you're moving your egg around. Also be very, very careful of these triple needles. If you can see, they are barbed, which means if you poke yourself in the finger with them, it is going to hurt and it is gonna go go through there pretty, uh, pretty severely. Okay, so I've got it kind of tacked on. So it's gonna look a little messy, a little gloppy, a little bumpy, um, definitely not like an egg yet, but we are gonna get there. Um, for someone who's done this before, who's quick and has a multi-tool, um, may take only 20 minutes, 25. Um, for someone who is a beginner, it is going to take a little bit longer because you're going to move a little bit slower. And that's probably better so that you don't um, poke yourself in the finger. Um, for someone with a single needle, it is going to take a lot longer. Um, I would guess it would take closer to 45 minutes, maybe even an hour. Um, 
but it's not hard to do. So if you have the time, then it's definitely worth it because it makes a great gift. And it's also a great thing to make for yourself, you know? Like for me, I'm a crafter, so this is ideal. I actually don't have a pin cushion, so <laughs> it's a good idea for me. Um, anyways, okay, so now I'm gonna start really felting. I'm gonna start on one half and work all the way through at once, flip it around, do it again, and then just keep repeating that process until I get to a nice, smooth fiber that I'm looking for. And I'll show you the various stages as we go. Okay, this is one time around the bend. Um, so we've just got it all attached and I've gone around once real quickly um, in my first round of needle felting. Um, very, very textured right now, not what we're looking for. We definitely want a nice, smooth, even service, surface and um, you can see that is not what we currently have. Um, but you can see that you know, immediately you start to see the shape take. Um, and we do want to see that. So let's keep going. And you can see that I keep my work spinning around. Um, that's just the way that I work on a round object like this is I try to get an even amount of felting in and I'll keep kind of twisting and moving around as I see lumps and bumps um, coming at me. If you see, since we want to smooth this out, this is supposed to have you know an egg-like curve to it, so we want a nice smoothness. So as you see you know bumps in your work, definitely needle felt them out. If you see holes in your work, however, you have to grab a little tuft of your roving and you need to fill the holes. That's also true if you start to see your wool underneath showing through from your yarn, then you also have to take another tuft and fill that in as well. So let's keep going. Okay, here's another good round. Um, you wanna start really checking your shape as you go now. We are not there yet. What we're looking for is a nice smooth surface like, like this. Okay, and this is the one we're going to be embroidering on later, but um, you can see how it's felted in. It's, it's a nice, smooth, there's no fuzzy sticking out. It's a solid, you know, fiber surface. This is still not very smooth. Um, you can still see the fibers going through very clearly. Um, so we still have work to do. But what I want you to pay attention to is the shape of your egg. Okay, so we want it to be nice and even, and you can see it's a little bumping out here, and you can see little bumpies here. Um, you can definitely see the outline. We've got, this side looks a little bit bigger here. That's not nice and even. Um, we've got some little bumps down below, down here. So as we twirl our egg around coming from the side, I want you to pay attention to these little bumps that come up, these little inconsistencies. I want you to focus on um, felting around the skinny part of your egg and not felting so much on the top. And when you do felt on the top, go back around this area that helps keep this side smaller. When you do the fat side, felt from above on the fat side to flatten it out and then start felting around slowly, getting the bumps out. Um, anyways, so we're gonna do another round and we're gonna be focused on shaping. This is also the part where you already wanna have your holes filled, but I can see here that I have a small back black thread that got away from me, so I'm actually gonna cover that up with a little bit of my pink roving instead of trying to pull it out because it'll be a lot harder to try to pull that out than to just cover it up. And that happens a lot with the wool. It picks up everything, no matter how careful you are. There's always some little piece of fluff or a stray hair or something that gets stuck in there, but you can easily cover it up. So, all right, so I'm gonna keep felting here. Make sure you're keeping your needle or needles um, straight into the fibers because um, we don't want to break needles. 
Essentially, you're just trying to smooth everything out and make sure your curve is correct on your egg. Okay, I think we are there. I've got a nice, pretty perfect shaped egg here. Um, really liking the shape. And I'm really, when it, gets, when it gets where it needs to be, it'll feel kind of hard. It won't be all soft and squishy. It'll have like a nice uh, smooth surface to it. And you won't be able to really tell the fibers apart. It'll all be like one uh, kind of solid fabric. Um, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you, before we start our embroidery, the one thing we need to know is how to hide the knots. So I'm gonna start with that. And I was gonna embroider on my blue egg, but I think I'm gonna try embroidery on this nice light color um, so you can see it better. Okay, I'm gonna use this lovely dark red and I'm gonna knot the end. I'm actually gonna do a double knot at the end because the single knot will has a tendency to go through the felt, so a double knot would be just about right. And then we're going to thread. I have a nice long piece here because I don't really know what I'm gonna do yet. And I don't wanna be short, so. Okay, so we're all threaded. Now, <clears throat> because we are not working on a flat surface like a piece of fabric, we don't have the ability to put the needle through the back side. So we have to work in the surface of the felt and that can be a little bit of a challenge um, with some of the embroidery stitches. Um, also what's a challenge is hiding your knots, but here's how we're gonna do it. Um, I am going to start by putting my needle either in the bottom or top of the egg, depending on where I wanna start and I wanna start um, somewhere up top. So I'm gonna enter here and I'm gonna come out at this where I want to start my design which is right about there. Okay so once the knot gets up close you can see there's the knot and I'm gonna pull from over here until I hear it pass through the felt. You hear that? Okay. So now the knot is inside the egg. So I'm gonna continue with my embroidery and at the end I will um, pull this tight and cut it off. But for now I'm gonna start on a stem stitch and I'm gonna kinda do, I'm gonna be curving it around so, um, but when you do the stem stitch normally you would insert here and you would um, go to the back of your fabric and then come up in the center right here while holding this to the side, like coming up through the middle of what's left. But because I can't really do that from the back side, what I'm gonna do is however long I want my stitch, I'm gonna put my needle right under here and I'm gonna pop it up about halfway, halfway between where I'm entering and from my first entry into the felt. And I'm gonna keep this thread to the left. And it will come out like that. Okay, now I'll show you what my next one will look like. Okay, so you can see it's gonna come out this pretty much the same, um, but we just have to vary the way that we do it. So we'll take this again and we'll hold it to the left to keep it out of our way. And however far we go down here is gonna be the length of our stitch. So we wanna keep it somewhat consistent, but we're gonna stay in the surface of the felt and we're gonna come up again about halfway Okay, um, Okay. so I did kind of a modified stem stitch here, um, fern stitch over here, and now I want to get rid of this end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to knot it pretty close to the felt. Okay, and once I have my little knot in, I'm going to take the needle 
where I last came out, my last hole, and I'm going to just exit elsewhere. And what we're going to do is just drag that knot through the felt, just like that, disappears, and we've got this. So now we just want to pull this, not too tight, but taut, and clip it really close to the felt, and then it disappears too. All this in the swirl is all stem stitch, and these are all little French knots, and I'll show you that next. Okay, with a French knot, you just want to wrap the thread around two or three times, and it go the three, and then we're just going to stick it real close to the hole we were just in. Now, because I'm in the felt, my exit point is going to be where I want my next flower, which is right here. So I'm going to slide that through. There we go. That's our little French knot. Okay, do it one more time. One, two, three. Enter in here, and let's go over here. Now this is a nice size um, little flower, but you can take it down to two and you can make it a little smaller. Um, you can even, I think you can do four and make it even bigger, but um, two or three I think is standard. Okay, and this is my finished project. And I did orange and yellow, little French knots, a um, a um, little bit of a modified stem stitch down here. You're gonna have to modify your stitches a little bit because you have to go in and out and work in the surface of the felt, um, but you can still get a really close replica of the stitch you're going for. This uh, branching is done with the fern stitch, and I'm still practicing the fern stitch. It's a little bit of a tricky one on the felt for me. Um, you can see on the other side, my first one, I was trying to curve it. Um, I have a little bit of a pucker here and I got a little loose, I left a loose stitch somewhere in here. Um, this is also my first, first time doing the French knot, which um, actually I really like. The French knot is really easy to do, and it's super adorable, so um, I just love it. It just adds a really sweet little accent to just about anything. Um, anyways, you can do any kind of design you want. You can work around the A, you can swirl around it. Um, I suggest maybe starting with a running stitch if you've uh, never done any of these stitches before. These are all very basic stitches. And if you go to Bonnie's Learn With Me series um, that's in our playlists, um, you'll get a nice idea of how to do all of these and it'll be step by step and you can watch her do it as well. That's about it. We are going to put a pin in this. We are done. Thank you so much for watching.